um, after you know flying helicopters and you know that type of thing. And I don't know. Maybe I can teach you how to fix vibration problems. Are you with me? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of case histories that I've kind of worked on over uh, over my career. And I think case histories are a good learning tool. You kind of see the approach, and, and it gives you kind of like we, we came, we saw, we conquered, and, you know, that type of thing. So we're going to be doing a number of case histories uh, this morning that are just titled How to Fix Vibration Problems. And generally, we're looking for something not to put a Band-Aid on it, but to do root cause failure analysis type of fix. All right, fix the problem so hopefully it won't uh, occur again. All right, getting right into it. The first one is it's a 4,000 horsepower uh, induced draft ID fan, and it had a structural resonance. <clears throat> okay, it's an 80 inch diameter fan. There's a picture of the fan. Uh, 80 inch diameter fan, six inch diameter shaft, sleeve bearing fan, Concrete pedestals, uh, direct drive to a four-pole motor. Uh, it says it's going to run somewhere around 1,800 RPM then. And it's identical to another unit that has been in service 12 months. All right, this was a plant they were expanding, and so they had two uh, expansions to their boiler house. Uh, first fan uh, came in, was commissioned, running fine, no problems. Uh, they put this fan in and had a lot of excessive vibration. Uh, the service uh, tech from the fan supplier was down there commissioning the fan. He had been working on it for a number of days. And they called for some additional help. All right, the fan had excessive vibration at one times turning speed. The non-drive end bearing horizontal was greater than 25 mils. All right, the bearing uh, non-drive end bearing vertical was less than three mils, so very high directional, and the drive end bearing uh, was less than three mils. So it was very high on the non-drive end, the outboard end of the fan, all right, in the horizontal direction. The fan manufacturer's field service representative was unable to balance out the vibration. He had been there for several days trying balance shots. All right, <clears throat> so, we get into, okay, what might be the cause of this fan? And imbalance is certainly one of those, but if he's a tech rep from the fan supplier, there's a good guess that he knows how to balance fans. I mean, he does this type of thing for a living. All right. Um, the other situation was, is this a resonance condition? All right, supported by that was the very high horizontal direction, much, much higher than the vertical. I use a rule of thumb if the vibration is like four or five times higher in one direction than the other, I'm going to be suspicious that it might be a resonance uh, type of issue. And again, you know, this was more than seven times ratio between the vertical and the horizontal. And he was unable to balance it. All right, not going to you know, typically be able to balance if it's a resonance issue. You may have to do other, uh, other work on it. All right, so going in, just looking at his data, saying, you know what, I don't, I'm, I don't think we're looking at just a pure imbalance situation here. So he said, okay, let's develop a test plan. What are we going to do to acquire some data and try to, to prove one or more of these hypotheses. All right, well, I wanted to go in and I wanted to get full speed data, so start it up, run it, and get full speed data on all the bearing uh, locations. All right, limited. The tech rep says we're not going to run this fan for more than 30 seconds. It's too violent and it's going to take out my bearings. All right, so we had a 30 second time limit to be able to collect data. So we're not going to get a full set of readings uh, like we would like to get. Okay, uh, I wanted to collect, you know, uh, FFT spectra, time waveform, and one X amplitude and phase. So I said the best we can do is probably get one or two points and then be set up to get a coast down, uh, a Bode plot, 
uh, so that we can see the vibration when he trips the fan after 30 seconds. We can try to get the fan coast, uh, coast down. All right, so that's something we could do for online testing. We could also do some resonance testing techniques that don't require the fan to be running. Uh, doing things like a modal or impact test, uh, a, a bump test, and maybe a instrumented hammer uh, uh, full modal, uh, modal test. The other thing we'd like to look at is we've got an identical fan that's been running for 12 months, started up with no problems. What's different? They're, they're identical, yes, but nothing's ever really identical. All right, so we said, let's look at a design audit. Do we think that there's something in the fan design, the fan supports, soil testing, the support structure? What, is, what makes this fan different than the other fan that started up and has been running uh, without any issues? So we kind of had a test plan, a little bit abbreviated for, uh, for being able to collect, uh, collect a lot of data. Um, but we said, let's, let's do that, okay? So let's, we, we did that, and now let's look at the initial online testing uh, that was performed. And sure enough, kind of confirmed what he had been telling us. Uh, this is the non-drive end horizontal. We're looking at about 22 mils. All right, what's the frequency? It's one times turning speed. All right, so we have a strong 1x uh, in the horizontal. No surprise there, we expected it, but just wanted to verify what, what the tech rep had been, uh, been telling us. All right, uh, the next is looking at the vertical. We only had two mils. So 22 mils to two mils, that's what an 11 to one ratio. Boy, that's red flags go off when I see that type of thing that says, look for a residence. Uh, there's something something that's not just a balance situation. If it were on balance, the vertical I would expect also to be much higher than two mils. All right, so then we did the coast down. This is the end of the 30 seconds. I mean, he was, I'm gonna start it up. At the end of 30 seconds, I don't care what you're doing, I'm hitting the off button, all right? And so we had very quickly took, you know, two points and then switched right over to get a coast down Bode plot in the horizontal. Now, for those of you that may not be familiar with coast down or Bode plot, you get a plot of amplitude of, our, of vibration at one times the turning speed, and that was our offending frequency, versus the turning speed. So at full speed, we're up at 1795, and then the fan coasts down, and we record the amplitude of vibration, and we record the phase angle as we go through that coast down. All right, so full speed is way up over here. And if you look, when we get down to 1691, that's this peak right here, we hit the highest vibration. We actually hit 34 mils. So he was probably right that we don't want to run this fan for very, for very long. All right, so that is kind of an indication that we're going through a natural frequency or resonance condition. The phase angle, if we look, the phase is not changing very rapidly. If it were a natural frequency of the fan wheel, the shaft, you would expect to see close to a 90 degree phase change and the phase changing very rapidly. So that tells me the combination of this is it looks like we have a resonance, but it's not resonance of the rotating assembly. It's structural. There's, there's something in the foundation, the structure of this fan, all right, that is giving it this natural frequency where there shouldn't be one by design. Okay, goes down to the vertical. It shows, yes, we do have a natural frequency. It's at a lower, uh, lower speed, but the amplitudes are, you know, are much less. It at eight, eight mils at its highest, uh, highest peak. All right, so now let's kind of talk about, gee, what do we have? It says it looks like we have a natural frequency in the horizontal direction with what's called a separation margin, the distance between the running speed, in, in this case, 1796, 1800 RPM, and the natural frequency. It says how you'd like that to be a long ways apart. You won't, don't want to run it at the natural frequency. 
In this case, we have a separation margin of 6%, 1795 minus the 1691 divided by the running speed, and it's 5.7%. Fan design would, good fan design would tell you you'd like that to be, you'd like it to be 25%. You can live with 10% and might squeak by with, uh, with, you know, with a 10%, but uh, that's just way too close to this fan is parked and running right near a natural frequency or a resonance uh, condition. In the vertical direction, we had 14%, so we're just you know, that much removed that we're probably going to be able to get away with operating if that was the only issue we have. It's the horizontal that's giving us the issue. The next thing is said, well, let's go in and let's do some impact testing. Impact testing is we play like we're Vikings. We get a battering ram and we hit the, uh, the fan structure and we measure to see what kind of uh, frequency it vibrates at. It's like a tuning fork. So we hit it once and we measure that frequency. All right, and so we went ahead and did that and we found that we had a natural frequency at 1700 cycles per minute. How does that fit with what we saw here? 1691, very good correlation between our hammer test and impact test and what we're really seeing in the coast down test. All right, now we could go in and say, well, what's the next step? You know, we know we have a, a natural frequency. This is a large fan. This is not a trivial you know, type of thing. So we said, what we really ought to do is, is do an experimental modal analysis so that we see how stiff is this fan. Modal analysis will tell you how much force it takes to generate that kind of vibration. If there's a resonance, it could take very little force to cause that much vibration. And so we went in and said, we'll do, a, we'll do an experimental modal analysis. All right? And that showed that the fan had a rocking motion if you look at this is the pedestal, that pedestal was moving back and forth, all right, and, and rocking back and forth. Now this is supposedly set on uh, compacted earth, all right, with a concrete base that's like 12 inches thick. Um, they did uh, bore samples when they were you know, designing this to make sure that the, the soil compaction and everything else was what it should you know should be everything looked good we were telling we came up after this and said it, that rocking motion tells us there's poor support at the corners out here on the space can't happen anybody ever heard that before impossible no we did the design we did everything the way it's supposed to be all right well then we went in and started looking and doing a, a design audit you know, construction audit of the of the fan. From the fan area, there was no shaft criticals or anything that uh, indicated there shouldn't be a problem with that. All right, the drive end pedestal doesn't have the vibration, only the non-drive end. All right, and there's an, an identical fan running without excessive vibration. So we're kind of saying, yeah, I think the fan design is probably okay. There's something in the support structure that may be a mess. So we went in and said, you know, let's, let's do an audit. So the, the mass the, of the concrete that they poured met normal construction criteria. Uh, soil test, the, the, the test that they had done, we looked at the soil compaction, everything looked like it should be good. All right, uh, so we, you know, we're still a little bit like what could be, you know, causing this. So then we went in and we looked at the drawings. And this is a powerhouse that had been in existence for quite some time. They had to expand the building in the powerhouse in order to have room to put this fan in. So they knocked down a, a, an outside wall and extended the floor and the roof to put this fan inside. Well, that wall was on a footing and you look at the drawings and it says that footing was to be knocked down to a certain level. So they, they break out the concrete. And then they're supposed to put corrugated cardboard on top of that when they poured the concrete. 
so that there wouldn't be the fan sitting on top of that, uh, that wall, that it would be relieved and then there would be uh, compacted dirt all around it because that wall would be very stiff compared to compacted uh, earth. And that wall, unfortunately, was just about in the center of the fan uh, uh, support. So he said, you know what, we're a little bit suspicious that maybe that wall wasn't, that footing wasn't removed, and now we've got a fan that's just teeter-tottering on top of that wall. So we broke out the concrete and then dug up underneath, and sure enough, that wall had not been knocked down. All right, so now you've got a, you know, you've got a fan that's there. They want to run this thing. What are we going to do? You know, and so we did go in, excavate, and then they poured uh, columns. They put in concrete uh, form tubes at each corner of the pedestal that went down like seven, eight feet and actually formed concrete um, piers for this to sit on. All right, so then it wasn't going to sit there and teeter-totter. And so that was the, the final correction, you know, to, uh, to this problem. Um, they went ahead and did that, started up the fan, never had to do any balancing, anything like that. The fan was, was running well. All right, so just an example of, you know, having to look maybe a little bit deeper and not accepting of that's impossible. I mean, I hear that so many times. That can't happen. You know, well, you know, if if all of the data seems to point you in that direction, maybe that's something that you need to look into a little bit deeper.